Uh, welcome everybody to 15 and 15. We have Elizabeth Johnston joining us here today to talk about um, the habits of mind experience or home uh, here at Plymouth State. I'm going to um, turn it over to you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, so I was thinking this could be an interesting conversation of thinking about um, home in terms of the importance for students and where are the touch points that maybe we can have conversations with students about the habits of mind experience. Um, as you may know, the general education program is transitioned to calling itself the habits of mind experience to really put at the forefront these skills that students will develop um, within the gen ed program. But as we know, they're doing this across so many spaces on campus. Um, and I think part of that shift has come that we also have faculty like myself who are dedicated to thinking about the home experience. So that means that we're doing more than just teaching courses within home. We're also thinking about our service and our scholarship um, in a different way in terms of thinking about how our pedagogy is informed by what we're doing, but also like how are we being advocates on campus for home? And so I've been doing a lot of thinking about that. The other piece that I think is really important for us to, th to consider is that the four habits of mind are part of our institution institutional learning outcomes. So we have six institutional learning outcomes and four of them the, are the habits of mind. And so that means that we're, we're saying that this is really important to us. So um, are we doing all we can to support students and seeing that importance? Um, and if you're curious, the other two learning outcomes is competency in your field of study and then also having a positive impact on the wider community. And I mentioned that because as we think about November and accreditation, that's something we should all be mindful of. So uh, this slide only communicates two spaces, but I thought it's a good place for us to start. Um, we have, um, particularly for our incoming students, they're going to see the habits of mind within their regional, residential life experience, but then also through their coursework. And so residential life and dining services have really made a point of thinking about um, the habits of mind and what does that mean for their, their living experience on campus and have tried to infuse that lens through a lot of the program that they're doing, the ways that they're supporting the students through the conversations with their CAs and other spaces on campus. And so um, I think this is this is one touch point that we have um, where students are able to think about the habits of mind in a context maybe beyond what they're doing in their courses. Obviously, the other place that students are going to have a lot of experience with the habits of mind is through the, the general education program, the habits of mind experience program. And the piece that I think is particularly interesting to think about um, when we think about the courses is how many of these courses our st students are gonna take during their first year here at Plymouth. So we think about the first year experience courses like tackling a week of problem, composition, mathematics, but then students are often taking directions courses um, as well. And so the reason I think that, that this is something important for us to think about is we've had so many conversations about retention on campus and how do we support uh, incoming students. And so these courses that they're taking, um, these are opportunities for us to think about the ways that we're engaging with our students, the ways that we're having conversations about the habits of mind to get them excited about what the potential opportunities are for them. So within the Habits of Mind experience, uh, tackling a wicked problem is when students are first introduced to the Habits of Mind. And so within that course in particular, there's lots of opportunities for students to have conversations about what they are and where um, they see potential for developing some goals for themselves and how they might develop more within the Habits of Mind. And then the other courses within the program, there's so many opportunities for them to have uh, uh, places where they're they're thinking about maybe not all the habits of mind, but maybe a particular habit of mind. So uh, I'm teaching right now a um, self and society direction course, and we were just talking about the habits of mind. And 
And one of the things that the students really resonated with them was purposeful communication. They just saw that in everything that we were doing in our class. And so it was an opportunity for them to think about it and how, how we're using it and where we might go with our work this semester, particularly um, when so much of the class is focused on discussion and constructing knowledge with each one another. So they have all these experiences that then lead up to the integrated capstone experience which is the other big bookend to the Habits of Mind experience. And obviously that's a place that we're still developing that course. Um, next year, every student, junior and senior will be taking an NCAP. And this is where they're applying not only their development of the Habits of Mind, but then bringing in their expertise from their major and from other spaces to work on a signature project. And so, we know that the students are going to have these experiences, but I'm I'm thinking that it's more than that, right? Um, so I I was thinking about like the ways that we're connecting with students to help them think about the habits of mind more broadly, and so one of the things that came to my mind was really um, how are we taking the opportunity to infuse the habits of mind in our conversations when we're um, advising students. So one thing is obviously like talking about their course selection, like why are they making the choices within the courses that they're making? Um, maybe there's um, an area of interest, maybe there's a skill that they wanna develop, but being really mindful of like, they do have choice, especially within the directions courses that they take, um, helping them see like, what are the potential possibilities? The other thing I was thinking about related to advising was how we might use it as um, a chance to help students see how they're maybe developing the habits of mind, or maybe sometimes not so much developing the habits of mind when they are faced with a challenge. So I feel like right now, because I've had a lot of advisees reach out because of the three-week progress reports, this was on the top of my mind of where are places where they might um, use, uh, develop some purposeful communication skills, whether it's like reaching out to a professor to, to try to get a little assistance, whether it's sending an email, how do I construct that in a professional context, who, who is, who's the audience there? Um, maybe it's helping them find resources to help them think about like, okay, I'm not really sure that I have the best strategy for um, meeting my studying needs. Like, what can I do? What are the strategies that I might be able to develop? So I see that there's like so much opportunity through um, our conversations with advisees to enforce how students might think about the habits of mind and connect in another way. The other place that I was thinking about was actually something that was more recent to my thinking. And that was through my conversations with with Leslie from Career Services was thinking about how students are actually using um, specific uh, projects from their Habits of Mind courses as um, opportunities to share on their resume of what they're capable of doing. So I think that's something I hadn't thought about before in my advising conversations, but I think could be a really great addition to when students are asking for support in constructing resumes, like, obviously within the major, they get a lot of support thinking about how to how to share their experiences, but that's only like one part of what they've been able to accomplish. And so I think that's another touch point that we could have. Uh, obviously, like within the home courses, that is a pretty important place to have conversations about the habits of mind, where I see that students need to be able to see like why they might be developing this school skill, how they might be developing this skill. Um, I think earlier during university days, uh, we had a session that talked a little bit about infusing home within courses. And one thing that resonated with me is some of of the participants shared like that they're actively thinking about the habits of mind from the course design perspective 
but maybe sometimes are not being as explicit with the students about that development. And so that seems like that's another opportunity to help students see that thread. I mean, I don't know if this happened to you before, but it's happened to me like plenty of times. Like I don't realize something is something else until somebody helps me see it. Sometimes I'm not ready to notice that in my own work um, until much later on. And so sometimes I need a little support seeing that thread and helping break it down so that I can can understand how I'm developing a particular skill. So I think that's a, an important piece that we might think about as well. And then the last part I was um, pondering about recently is just like, where are there places on campus that we might be able to um, get support in terms of helping students develop the habits of mind. So I mentioned Leslie earlier in the conversation because she just uh, was um, working with my TWP classes and helping them see why do we focus on the habits of mind? This is something that we know that employers get excited about if uh, their future employees have strong communication skills, are able to solve problems, understand how to take take on um, a leadership role within a collaborative team. These are all important skills. And so it was it was nice to see how she was able to bring her expertise into the TWP class to share some some knowledge about that employer perspective. And for first year students, sometimes that feels like a long way away, but at the same time, they can see that as like, when they come in, they're really focused on their major and on developing skills to help them get the job they want. And so this is, can be seen as another way, right? If you're developing these skills that allows you to do that as well. And so that's just one potential connection that I was thinking about. And I don't know if this is appropriate for these conversations, but I was I was sort of hoping to open up the conversation to the group a little bit to see where do you see places that we can help students connect with the habits of mind? Um, what have you done in your previous work or where do you see opportunities for potential growth? All right, I, my, my mouse disappeared on me. Um, <laughs> we can definitely open it up. We have a few minutes left if anybody wants to chime in. I was gonna say that um, I, I, I had another thought that was related that I think you were kind of getting at too, which is um, helping in those classes, sort of classes across the university where it would be nice to see habits of mind infused more um, universally. I'm wondering whether or not, because I think one of the things people struggle with is like, what would this look like in this class? Like, how would I do this in this class? And I'm wondering whether or not it would be useful at some point to do a session or, or try to collect some stuff online of examples people could give of how they're doing, um, you know, purposeful communication in an upper level business class or in a, um, in a math class, right? Like, what do those things look like in different disciplines? Because for me, I know it's really useful sometimes to have those examples um, to get me kind of thinking about what's possible. Nope, anyone I, think a, I think that's a really great idea because I do think that was sort of what came out of part of that university day session. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much going on already. It reminds me of our some of our challenges with cluster projects is that students will not be able to articulate that they're doing cluster projects when they've done lots of cluster projects. Yeah. Uh, Kathy has talked about this before. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's similar with the habits of mind. They're infused throughout our, our curriculum, uh, but we don't always talk about the specifics. Yeah, and, if, and in many ways, if we are not explicit about those in our classes from time to time, it's hard for our students then to be making those connections and seeing those connections. Yeah, I think that's really important. And I think it's it's really helpful to not only introduce the four habits, but to introduce the signposts within the habits of mind, because that provides the opportunity yeah. to have a more nuanced conversation of, okay, you could have 
some strengths in your communication skills and still have areas where you might be trying to to work on maybe your comprehension skills or work on how you can be more aware of the context of a message. So I think those are tools that can be particularly helpful. Yeah, definitely. Um, I went to the University Day session that you referenced earlier, Elizabeth, about um, kind of infusing habits of mind um, across the work that we're doing um, at the university. And something that came to mind was about um, teaching lecturers and like how much support around these, you know, structures and frameworks they receive. Um, and as someone who was just hired as a TL, um, I have some opinions about <laughs> that kind of preparation and communication that we do with uh, with teaching lectures. And, and I think lots of teaching lectures are teaching those like directions, courses within um, our, our home program. Um, and I think there's lots more that we can do about, you know, supporting and spreading the word about the habits of mind and the habits of mind experience as a whole to them. I totally agree. I think that's a really good place to end our conversation. Yes. Thank you, Hannah. I was just going to say, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. We'll be posting this on the CoLab website under resources. Um,